soup that I have been uh, eating here lately that I was so really surprised how well I liked it because it is a healthy, super healthy one. And I wanted to share it because a lot of us is doing diets and such like that. And I'm not so much doing this to diet. I'm doing this just to get my body in line because I have really blowed it here this fall and winter. And I'm trying to get myself back on track right. And the ingredients in this soup is very good to help jumpstart your liver and your gallbladder and, and all those good things to help get them to moving those toxins out of your body and stuff. But like I said, I'm surprised at how well I like this. The one thing I don't have today for this soup that I do put in it, though, is shiitake mushrooms. And it just really adds a good meaty something to this soup. But this actually came from something I've seen of Dr. Oz's and uh, it goes along with the quinoa breakfast that I told you about in the previous video and eating pineapple and um, apples I think it is is part of it too which I'm not doing it all I'm just doing you know part of it but I really like this soup so I wanted to make it again so I wanted to share this with you but let me show you the ingredients right quick and because I'm just going to be talking as I go make this soup, so I'm just going to show you what's in it, and then I'm going from there. First of all, I have um, vegetable broth in it. Uh, here's a half a head of cabbage that I had left. One of my cayennes, and I'm probably ain't going to use all of that one. It's one of my dried ones that I have dried from my garden. Uh, four garlic cloves. And I threw this together last time without an actual recipe, just knowing what the ingredients were. So I'm making it the way I did last time. And a fennel, and I used the whole thing. I do save a little bit just to give to my goats. Because I give them fennel, especially my doe right now, because she's fixing to have a baby. And fennel's good to help with milk production. And my uh, parsley, which I've got to hurry up and use because it's getting wilted down. Hey, um... So anything can be made better if taken into consideration. That's why most of us raise gardens, because we know what stuff in the supermarket's made like. And I'm not a... As for my garden, I try to raise organic food, by all means. And that's important to me. But I also buy things in the grocery store. Well, it's just like this, this broth here. It's not organic. I would love to be, for it to be organic. But I can't afford for everything to be organic. And there are some things that I choose to make organic more so than others. And some of it's because of how it's processed. It's like carrots. You know, carrots are a root vegetable. I don't buy those organic because, you know, they're, they're a root vegetable. I don't feel like they get as much toxins and stuff in them as some things do. But I don't know. That's just my theory on it. But I do believe that a lot of things is how it's been made through the years. And it's just like with um, Lori on Whippoorwill Hollow. She talks about making her lard and stuff. I don't think there's a thing wrong with lard. When you make it yourself. Just like she said in that video. Uh, that anything can be made, made bad or bad, made good. You know, if a pig has been pasture raised and it's been raised right and stuff like that. I don't have a problem with them making lard out of something like that and using lard. Because I use lard myself for that matter. I use bacon fat. A lot of people know, well, I guess I do. I use my bacon grease for a lot of things. And I love that. Um, but a lot of the bad stuff is because of how it's been processed before it gets to us in the first place. So, I try to eat right, but I eat stuff that a lot of people may not think is right, but I feel like it's just according to how it's made. And, you know, a lot of us, we would love to do everything organic, but financially it ain't always the thing that people can do. And I don't want anybody to feel, you know, like I've said before, I've been a single mom before, and it kind of breaks your heart when you see things and you feel like, well, I wish I could live this organic life and raise my kids right. I'm not doing my kids right by doing them this way and blah, blah, blah. And don't feel condemned by that because everybody does the best they can do where they're at. And that's the important thing. And with me, with my faith and all, I feel like because of that, 
the grace of God will cover the rest. Because you can't always do what you want to do. It's not always feasible. And is that to condemn you because you can't? No, it's not. So, keep that in mind if there's anybody out there that's single. But I've read, you know, articles after articles about people back years ago, how they ate. And see, I love stuff like that. I love the history of food and stuff like that, especially pioneer type stuff. And they weren't, they raised their food. They Their, their food was organic for the most part. You know, I don't. They didn't, they didn't have no way of having processed food. And they didn't have half of the diseases and stuff that we have today. So, you have to figure. And then some people will say, yeah, they did. We just didn't hear about them, blah, blah, blah. I'm, I disagree with that. I'm sorry, but I do disagree with that. And that's also why I'm so close to herbal remedies, too. Because, you know, and... Well, just to be honest, once again, that goes back to my faith. I believe that God was the creator of all things. And I believe he knew ahead of time things that we would struggle with. And he put preparations in place to help us take care of ourselves. I'm adding water to this. I've heard, I probably should have had another thing of vegetable broth, but I don't. So that's okay. You could even add chicken bouillon, I guess, to this. Um. Anyway... With all that being said, I have had, I've dealt with some health issues here in the past couple of years that I don't like. I, I have an issue with stuff like that. And I don't have nothing against doctors by no means. And I guess I'll throw a disclaimer out there right now with all this, but um, I don't have a, a problem at all with doctors. But... I do believe that doctors practice, it. The, the thing is, they say they practice medicine. That means they're practicing, to me, this is what this tells me. This tells me that they're taking these pharmaceutical things that come about, and they're practicing with them. They're throwing it out there, seeing what it does to this person or what it does to that person. And I just don't like putting my entire dependence upon that to me that's shaky ground i mean i just i just don't like like doing that and not to say that doctors ain't great i'm so thankful for my doctor even because he's he's open he understands me he knows how i feel about some of these things and he respects that and just like i'm trying to respect the office of Fennel. Have you ever tried that? Or try it. This has got it's got like a licorice flavor. Didn't mean to interrupt myself, but that's something that a lot of people don't utilize. But it's super good in soup, by the way. Any kind of soup. Um therefore we have to take charge over our health. I feel like. I feel like it's our responsibility as stewards. You know, we talk about being stewards of the land and stewards of the of our animals and animal husbandry what about being stewards of our own health and being able to use wisdom with what we do the best we can and like I said then the grace of God can cover places that you you're not able to cover preferably this summer I'll be able to go through a lot more herbs with you that's actually out here. Especially if I get mine reestablished and get to show you some things that's just wild. That it's mo and probably in a lot of people's front yards, they just don't even realize it. And don't realize its properties. But, you know, it's even like fennel here. You know, fennel's considered a vegetable and a herb. Oh, I think it is, anyway. And who knew that that brings on milk production? I can't say for sure of this, but I'm sure if you looked it up, you could probably find where years ago the pioneers used this for women who wasn't producing enough milk for them. So this is what it looks like right now before it cooks down. 
I'm going to put a lid on this and let it cook down good. But this is, I tell you, you'd be amazed how good this soup is. I was shocked. I was surprised it didn't call for onion or nothing like that, but it don't. But these things are all supposed to help stimulate your liver and gallbladder and stuff. So that's their primary goal. So you could add onion to it if you wanted to or whatever. But I like the flavor so good, I just decided I wasn't going to mess with it. Other than I ain't got the mushrooms in there. I'm trying to position this to where light will hit it better, but you can't tell good. But these are some old pictures. This is a picture of my dad's first farm. And in behind back here near this tree line there is a creek running through there this is up in the mountains of west virginia and um, that's his little shed i think they put hay in there as well as the cattle could stand in there out of the rain you could tell it was muddy out through there out to the right there which is a big thing for pigs and stuff like that. they did have pigs i know back then too but then there's this other picture and my daddy actually built this. This is a milking parlor that him and his dad built. And uh, he was telling me a little, I love stories. And I wish I could do this to where the glare was hitting it so bad. I've got these hung in my ladder my daughter made me. But, oh, there we go. I can get close and do it. He was telling me about this picture, though. And I'll try to tell you a little bit. Uh, the cows, you know, went into milk. But back then... Their milking parlor had to be separate from the milk house. So back here behind this silo is uh, the milk house. They had to carry their milk out to that milk house, and that's where they kept it cool, and they uh, um, purified it or, you know, let it run through the filters and stuff to purify it. And they couldn't keep manure, which, I mean, you can't keep manure inside your milking parlor anyway, but they'd have to take it out here and put it in what we would call like a compost bin now. And they'd all have to do that every day. Scrape all that out there. And I don't know how many head they milked back then right there. They looks like there's 20 or 30 cattle just right here from the barn. So I just, I think I love the history behind stuff like that. I love to hear the tales behind it. It just blesses me that that was my daddy's first farm and he built that. And... And I'll show you this picture, which is an awesome picture, if I can keep the glare off it. That's my daddy. Milking cows. That was in the 70s. And he was squashing that cow up, getting ready to milk it. And that's when we lived in West Virginia, too. This picture is old, so it's hard to even get it to focus on this. But now, this was my grandmother and my grandfather. And... Uh, two of their horses. Apparently, I think my daddy told me that one of these horses was part mule. I think it's this big one here. And he, you know, that's what plowed their fields right there. And, oh, it's so crazy to see my grandmother like that in this picture. But I love this type of thing. I love the history behind it. And, you know, how far we've come as a modern society It'll be easier to bring us back over here. But how far we've come as a modern society compared to even our grandparents and or even my parents for that matter. Because it's just a different world. And that's why I don't want to take these things for granted. These modern conveniences that we have this day and time. And I don't want to lose the good skills that kept our grandparents and our parents strong. You know, they were strong people and 